Oh, Susan. Picture with you and Grace in a minute. Hi, how are you? Good, good to see you. Yeah. Wasn't that beautiful? Yes. Amen. So right now, I, you know, I just want to get your attention. We have the most important part of the day right now, because Louis is going to share the good news that Jesus died on the cross for you and for me, for sinners. And the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, but that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That means that Jesus died for you. That's what Easter is all about. That although you and I deserve hell, we deserve to die in our sins and go to an eternity in hell. But God made a way for you and I to be saved. He sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross in our place to take the punishment of God. And then God raised him from the dead on the third day, and he's living today. He is risen, and he's alive today, and he's here right now. But have you responded to his love? Have you received this free gift of God? For you to receive this uh, steak, you must eat it. And it's the same when it comes to Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ to impact you for eternity, to get you into heaven, you must receive him as your Lord and Savior. So right now, I just encourage everyone just to listen to Louis as he talks about Jesus Christ, why Jesus died on the cross, why he was rose, why he was raised from the dead. And then we're going to do the Lord's Supper and remember the shed blood of Jesus and the broken body. Amen. Father God, you said and you revealed yourself as one. I address the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of creation. And the God of the poor, the God of the rich. Father, I ask that today that you would bring your presence here, that you would let your glory fall. And I pray you would not let one heart go here untouched by your conviction. You wouldn't let one heart go here without being touched by your grace, my God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There was a man named Peter. And Peter was a nobody. Peter was a fisherman. Peter was an ordinary person. He wasn't a good looking man. He wasn't probably a very smart man. And he didn't really have a huge, huge purpose in this world. He lived his life knowing a little bit about a God who was far away and probably didn't concern himself with the affairs of men other than to give them rules. He'd heard of a God that gave rules to mankind and then seemingly left and left them to their own devices. And this is the way that this man Peter grew up. And he was born into the world just like many of us were. Into a normal family, in a normal home. And he looked normal and his, and his life was normal. There's nothing extraordinary about this man and he had no extraordinary talents. This man named Peter. And I'm going to fast forward and I'm going to tell you how Peter died. Peter, because of a belief that he wouldn't let go of, was put on an upside down stake with a horizontal beam. So he was upside down and his arms were stretched out. And through his wrists were about five to six inch nails that attached him to this cross upside down. And his feet also were attached by a nail to this cross and he was upside down. And upside down he would take hours to die of asphyxiation and of loss of blood. And this is how this normal man Peter died. This normal person who just grew up in a normal home, had a normal family. He found something so powerful that he would die in this excruciating way for it. This is a normal person. And this man, Peter, he was one of the followers of Jesus. And Jesus had a few other followers. One of them said, I don't even want to be buried like Jesus was buried. He said, wrap me in uh, papyrus, which is basically the equivalent of saying, wrap my body in newspapers and throw me in a tomb. Because I don't want to die like Jesus died. There was another one who was speared to death. Another one who was given a chalice of poison was put in boiling oil 
for the faith of Jesus Christ. Why? Because these are men who, for the, who really saw the crucifixion of Christ. These are men and women who saw what Jesus went through on the cross, who understood, who understood the cross. It's such a cliche. It's such a cliche. And it would just, it would fill me with joy to see everybody in these lineups who has a cross around their neck to take it and throw it in the garbage. Okay? Because the crosses that people wear around their neck and the way that we wear a cross around our neck like it's nothing and we use it as a piece of jewelry, it's the worst blasphemy we could ever understand. That we would take the most beautiful act in all of history and turn it into a cliché. Jesus died on the cross for you. What does that mean? What does it mean that the Son of God came and died on the cross for sinners? What does that mean? What does it really, really mean at the end of the day? Well, I'm going to start with this. I'm going to start with the human condition. Where are we? Every religion in the world is man's pursuit of God. The only true, true religion is God's pursuit of man. As soon as man sinned in the garden, God said, He said, where are you? He said, where are you? This is God's first words that He said to man from the fall. And I want you to picture this. Some of you have children. And I'm hoping there's somebody who can relate to this. Maybe somebody's had a child that's been ripped away from you and that's been taken away from you. This God of all creation, this God had such a superabundance of love in His heart, such a superabundance of passion in His heart. He said, I need somebody to share this passion with. I need something to share this heart with. So I'm going to make a creation out of my image and likeness. And that's what happens when you have children. You have a little baby out of your image and likeness. That is your family. That's your child. This is a part of you. This is your flesh and blood. And that's what God did. He made a people. He made a creation that were His flesh, that were His blood, that would bear His likeness, that would carry His glory. He created a people that would be a mirror image of Him. And these people lived with God. This creation that we call mankind lived before God in perfection. The philosophies of Nietzsche and other Satan-possessed people Believe me, the world has told you that you're worth nothing, that a human being is nothing more than a piece of slime that evolved and grew legs. The world tells us that there's no God with a personality. He's just a nameless, faceless force of good in the universe. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God has a personality. God's heart breaks. God's heart cries. God's heart knows more pain than any human being that's ever walked this earth. God's heart is alive. God's eyes see things that our eyes couldn't even comprehend. God is a personality. And God poured His personality into His creation. And His creation is mankind. God poured Himself into mankind. God poured Himself into a creation made out of dirt. That's you and me. That's you standing in the lineup. That's you created by the living God. And we are perfect without one fault in us. We were stood perfect before God, and God's heart rejoiced in us. God loved us, and we loved God, and we knew who He was. He wasn't far off. He walked with mankind. And this God, when somebody disobeys God, do you know what happens? God is everything that is good, everything that is just, and everything that is right. So when somebody disobeys God, they don't just disobey in a 